The year is 1991, and the place is a very dark and sad one. The United Kingdom. The University of Cambridge has a computer lab, and inside that lab there is something known as the Trojan Room, where 15 students are doing computer research, networking stuff, which sounds super boring, but back then, this was the shit. In order to do the research, these guys are often pulling some all-nighters, and what that means is that they're putting their being computer scientists before they're being British because they're not drinking tea, they're drinking coffee, baby. Just outside of the Trojan room, there is a corridor and in that corridor, there is a coffee machine. More specifically, I did my research, it's a Krups Pro Aroma 305. That small coffee machine is right there for anyone in the building to use. And uh, like, it's one small coffee machine for a building full of nerds. The demand is exceeding the supply, clearly. And this problem is particularly bad for people who work for the Trojan Room, but don't stay there to do the research. They're actually like uh, two or three flights of stairs away. So for example, imagine you're a researcher, okay? It's 3 a.m., you're working on something, you have to stay awake like by force. So you want to get some coffee, you, uh, you go down the stairs, you work for like five minutes and there's no coffee in the coffee machine. Someone else took it, okay? You, you just brewed it like 10 minutes ago and it's gone now, what the fuck? How do you solve that problem? How do you keep an eye on the coffee machine remotely. Well, despite these students not having a lot of resources because their students, they're usually broke. I've been there. I am still kind of there. I get it. They have something way more powerful. Ingenuity. Among the computer lab equipment, there's a camera and a very, very rudimentary frame grabber, basically a capture card. And by connecting the two together and then plugging them to an Acorn Archimedes computer, they're able to get a feed from that camera displayed on a computer. And so they take this contraption of camera and capture card, they point it at the coffee pot, and now, even though it is only 128 by 128 and black and white and three frames per minute, they have a continuous video feed of the coffee pot. They can tell if there's any coffee left without having to get the rest up from their chair and uh, go check personally. Now, you might be rightfully wondering, Femi, why are you telling me about like coffee and Cambridge students? This video is supposed to be about webcams, right? Well, between 91 and 92, this camera feed was only accessible internally to the students of the Cambridge Computer Lab. However, when in 1993, the Mosaic web browser dropped, adding the mind-blowing feature of letting you view images in a web page, which back then was like a revolution, the Trojan Room students figured out that it was more convenient for them to move the camera feed from the internal network to the World Wide Web so that anyone with an internet connection could just access it without having to configure anything. And that's when they accidentally created the very first webcam. 128 by 128, black and white, three frames per minute. More than 30 years have passed since then, and despite webcams definitely improving, they still kind of suck. This webcam right here is from my MacBook Pro from 2021. And despite the sensor size being basically on par with the front camera of my iPhone here, the quality here sucks. Oh, uh, Femi, if you dislike webcams so much, why don't you build your own one? Yeah, let's do that. I've actually had this video in my drafts for a while now, but I couldn't work on it because it requires some 3D printing and I didn't have a 3D printer and I also live in the middle of nowhere, so I can't just like order 3D printed parts from an Acker space. That's not an option. However, very recently, Bamboo Labs reached out to me and asked me to sponsor this video and they trusted me, a person with zero experience with 3D printing, enough to send me this A1 mini printer and this AMS light and also another A1 and another AMS light. Assembling the printers and the AMS light and using them has been incredibly easy. Bamboo also sells their own filaments, so you don't even have to tell your printer what filament you're using because every spool has an RFID chip telling the printer what you're doing. When you're done with a spool, you can also reuse it. You can buy filament without the spools from the Bamboo website. And I learned this because I accidentally ordered a lot of it. And that's when I discovered you can actually print your own spools if you want. Bamboo put the model on MakerWord. Before trying these printers, I 
generally thought 3D printers were super complicated and finicky, but this has been so easy to the point where I can sit on my toilet and just print stuff using my phone. It's amazing. Before making this video, I really wanted to master my craft. So I spent like two weeks just 3D printing whatever I thought was cool from Maker World daily. I really wanted to be able to make this printer sing. And I did. <laughs> so yeah, if you can tell from that clip, I am extremely satisfied with my A1. It even plays Krobainiki if I want, for God's sake. I'm gonna be using it and the A1 mini to build my webcam today. And if you want to get your own A1, just click the link in the description and you're going to find an affiliate link that is going to send you to the Bamboo Labs website and also help the channel. Thanks to Bamboo so much for trusting me with your printers and sponsoring the video. If you want from this image, you can try to guess what I'm going to try to 3D print when I finally get my hands on the STL file for it. And now let's get into what is a webcam? A webcam is basically made of three parts. Yes, of course, you can go all the way down to every little transistor. We are not going to do that, okay? We're going to keep this simple. The first part is the sensor and lens assembly, which is detecting the light and turning it into pixels. The second part is the image signal processor, which is taking those pixels and encoding them into a video stream, which your computer is then receiving over USB. And finally, the third part is the housing, which is what I need a 3D printer for, because I don't want to build a webcam with cardboard, that sounds dangerous. So before we build a webcam, we have to ask ourselves, how can we do better than companies that make them in scale? Aren't we inevitably going to fail because we simply cannot compete with companies? No, we can absolutely do better. Look, I could talk about capitalism and incentives to make profit, but I won't do that. I'm just going to tell you a lot of companies that sell webcams simply get away with using the cheapest components when it comes to the sensor and the ISP, and they simply get away with it because they technically are selling a product that does exactly what it says on the tin but only in ideal circumstances what we're building today is the complete opposite of this okay we are going to use good components readily available ones and on that bombshell back to the studio where i'm now wearing a hat for some reason all right so this is a raspberry pi zero two w that's a long name for a small single board ARM computer. It is running the same architecture as your phone, so it is very small and very power efficient and most importantly, very cheap. You can get this in the US for, I think, $15. I live in Europe, so I had to pay like double that in European Yuan, I guess, for taxes. It's taxes every time. I'm used to that. This SPC has two great things about it. The first one is that it has a built-in video encoder for 1080p 30 video streams. So we can feed it raw video and it's going to spit it out compressed and actually usable to make a USB webcam in theory. And also, if you take a look here on the top, you're going to see there is this small um, connector. That's a camera port because the same company that makes this, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, actually also makes camera cables and camera modules. This small thing right here is the camera module tray. It's got a 12 megapixel Sony sensor on it and it is kind of overkill for webcam, which is exactly what I want. It's a great sensor and with this you already have right here the hardware to make a webcam. But you can't just plug this to your computer and like make it work with magic. No, you need something that's even more convoluted. And that is... Okay, yeah, software-wise, we have to deal with Linux. I recorded and edited an entire tutorial for this part here, but most of you don't want to watch me type stuff on the terminal for like five minutes. So to keep this simple, I am just following this written guide from the Raspberry Pi team with a few tweaks and you'll find the link for that in the description. If you're a Linux enthusiast and you actually wanted to watch me explain everything software-wise, I'm gonna publish this cut segment on my Patreon, but like, just follow the written guide, okay? I don't wanna make Linux terminal content. All right, so the hardware is sorted out. We have the software here on our microSD. All we have to do now in theory is put the microSD in, connect the cable, the USB cable, to the data port. Be careful, not the power one. Since we have configured the Pi to just run the webcam script. In theory, if I open like photo booth now, it is just going to work as a webcam. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, everything is working great. It is just being recognized as a normal webcam. Uh, this angle is not great. <laughs> uh, as you can see, the autofocus is working great. Holy shit. 
<laughs> this camera module is actually like way better than I expected. So everything is working great. However, there's a problem. And the problem is that this is not a webcam. Like, <laughs> how am I supposed to use this? And that's because we are still missing the third element that makes a webcam, the actual housing, like the thing that <laughs> keeps it together and doesn't make it just <laughs> flop around like this. The Raspberry Pi team, when making the guide, actually also made some 3D models for a housing. So if you want a safe and fast option, you can download those. I used my AMS Lite to print one of these in two colors. So again, if you want the safe and fast option, do this. But I'm not personally going to do that. Okay, the question is, what 3D model are we going to print for the housing of our webcam? The official one, we make our own, we customize one, or we go great rubber! In 2003, during the WWDC in San Francisco, Apple announced the Power Mac G5, the best looking computer ever. This is not my opinion, by the way, these are facts that came to me in a dream where I was hanging out with Tommy Tallarico. The modular aluminum, <clears throat> she's great, her design was so well received by everyone that when it came time to replace the Power Mac G5 with the new Mac Pro, they literally kept the same design for 10 more years. Even the most oppressed minority PC gamers love this case so much you can find countless mods to make it work as an ATX case. Apple basically perfected the professional workstation in 2003 and it still looked fresh 10 years later. So in 2013, they killed it and they replaced it with a trash bin. The 2013 Mac Pro was always running warm. It wasn't easily user upgradable, unlike the previous Mac Pro to the point where people kept buying the older one <laughs> and everybody thought it looked like a trash bin. I I mean, what you're currently looking at right now is not a Mac Pro. It's an actual trash bin that I found on Maker World and 3D printed. So imagine you're Apple in 2013 and everybody hates your new computer so much they're literally buying your older ones used and upgrading them to their absolute limit just to avoid buying that fucking trash bin. What do you do now? You just go back, pretend it never happened and just start manufacturing the old design again? You can't do that. What you do instead is you go to the guy who designed the Power Mac G5 and ask him to please, please, please do it again. But this enough that it looks like a new product and that's the Mac Pro from 2019 that they're now selling with Apple Silicon so why did I talk about all of this if a design really works it's almost going to be timeless the Lamborghini Miura was made in 1966 and today even a small electric car can easily beat it in a straight line but that doesn't matter because it's still stunning it still looks insane so what if I told you that in 2003 in that same conference Steve Jobs also announced the best looking webcam ever The eyesight looks as beautiful today as it looked more than 20 years ago. It even comes with this cute built-in privacy lens so the government can't spy on you if you're eating illegal Kinder Surprise eggs. And while Apple never went back to this design, other companies probably took inspiration. By today's standards, the eyesight is very obsolete. And you would also have to daisy chain like four adapters to convert Firewire to Thunderbolt. So what if we took what we just made and just stuck it inside the eyesight housing? Quoting the philosopher Hannah Montana, we would get the best of both worlds. The Pi Sight project by Max Brown is meant for you to do exactly that. You take a Raspberry Pi Zero, a camera module, you print this single model right here, this block, and then you kind of figure out the rest on your own because there are no clear instructions here. This is great, except it's not meant for the camera module 3 or the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. But thankfully, the Raspberry Pi team actually made their own version of this project, which is updated so we can actually use the new hardware. And it also doesn't require any screws or O-rings or anything. You just have to print these two models right here, disassemble your eyesight, and then again, you have to figure out how to put everything together on your own. Yeah, so that's wrong. I was wrong. When you download the 3D model in the image gallery there, there is actually a step-by-step -step guide. I just didn't check the image gallery because I was just there to download the model and then open it in Bamboo Studio. So what you're about to watch is just me figuring everything out on my own. It's not a tutorial, I don't make those. It's basically the stream of consciousness of a mad woman trying to birth a webcam. Okay, so I imported the model on Bamboo Studio here. I slightly customized it and did some test prints. For something like this with my printers, we can go for either PLA or PETG. 
PLA is usually easier to print and it gives you the best aesthetics. For example, this bust right here, this fake statue that I printed from Maker World, was printed using Bamboo's Marble PLA. Pet G can be a bit more difficult to print and it can be more difficult to have a clean look when using it. But that depends really, this screen cover here and this spool are Pet G and they're flawless. Since Pet G is more resistant and it also prints at a higher temperature, it is usually the way to go if you're printing mechanical parts or anything that needs to be strong. In our case, since the cylinder is going to be hidden by the metal housing, I decided to go with transparent blue Pet G. Just like every single piece of hardware from the early 2000s, the eyesight is a nightmare to disassemble. I strongly recommend you follow the iFixit guy to do it. I'm not sponsored by them, they're just good. This is a process of screws on top of screws and then having to remove a weird dust filter. But I have a warning for you. Whatever you do, do not open the privacy lens. Never. It is not necessary for this project and I ended up breaking the mechanism. I accidentally snapped off a 0.2 millimeter spag, so I don't have a working privacy lens anymore. The CIA can now spy on me to figure out what VHS plugin I'm using. But after a lot of work, I ended up with what I needed. By the way, if you're doing this, when you're handling this tube, be careful, it is extremely sharp, it cut my hands like four times, I'm not kidding. When it comes to assembling everything into the 3D printed case, that's actually quite easy, you just put the Pi Zero in the center, you route the cable for the camera around it, you put the camera module on the front, to make everything fit, you need to snap off one of these screw mounts on the camera module, which is frankly terrifying, but it has to be done. And if you do everything properly, all that's left is putting the big plastic tube inside a big aluminum tube and then screwing this small plastic circle we also printed to the privacy lens, something that I can do because I f***ed up earlier, so I just ended up kind of budging it. And then you're done. Look at this. Look at how good it looks. Uh, let me switch to the actual image from the webcam. Okay, so I'm recording this on my editing computer. If you notice any weird flickering, that's not the webcam, that's the actual like lighting in the room. The Pi site doesn't have any built-in microphones, so audio-wise here we're using this Samsung Meteor that I got from Vinted for like 15 euros and these microphones are pretty ancient. I remember people in high school seven years ago using this to record cut montages, but you can find them for next to nothing and they're great. By the way, since we're using a Raspberry Pi Zero W2, we could, if we wanted, use Wi-Fi instead of USB to receive our video stream. However, I tried that and the latency wasn't great, so some software tweaking is definitely required and I don't know if it's going to be actually usable even if you try to do that. USB though is fine, you can do 1080p 30 and 720p 60 just fine. Uh, the autofocus is super fast. Sometimes it's like too sensitive. I might have to like change some settings, but as you can see, the quality here is great, even though, as I said, the lighting is not the best. To mount the camera on my monitor, I'm actually using the stand that came with the eyesight. So originally the eyesight actually came with different stands depending on your monitor. The one that I'm using is supposed to go on top of a CRT monitor. It actually had back in the day, a sticky bottom that of course just became non-sticky with time. So I just put some double-sided tape and it works great now. My monitor is pretty thick, however, if you have a thinner one, you might have to print a custom bracket like this one. Or I actually started working, I have some prototypes here, on brackets for my MacBook because I actually want to be able to use this with my MacBook too. I was inspired by the continuity camera mounts that you can buy for an insane price or 3D print at home that lets you connect your iPhone as a webcam if you have an iPhone and a Mac, it's native. And if you're wondering, Femi, if you could have done that from the beginning instead of like building your own webcam, why did you do any of this? And the answer is very simple and that is...